Shalom from Tel Aviv, Israel, and welcome to In the Gap, where we bring you the truth and nothing but the truth from a biblical perspective about Israel and the world. Anyone that has really watched the news recently knows that today there are Israeli Arabs living in the state of Israel. Yet so often we hear about this other group of people called the Palestinians. Do you know who the Palestinians really are and where they came from? Yes, what is the origin of the name Palestinian and where can it be found in history? Who are the true Palestinians? Did an ancient Palestinian nation or state ever really exist? Who was the first Palestinian ruler or king? What was the name of the ancient currency? What was the official Palestinian language in ancient time? Stay tuned as we separate fact from fiction and learn the truth about Palestinians and their roots. But first, let's join Sagi with our weekly Israeli update and learn what is really going on in Israel today. Yes. Thank you, Jacob and Elisheva, and welcome to Israel Update, your source for Israeli news from a Christian perspective in under a minute. I am Sagi Cohen, and here is today's story. Arab Muslims continue the reign of terror as they attack and kill Jews throughout Israel. Last week, a terror attack occurred in our building. The Palestinian Muslim killed two Jewish Israelis and injured others. None of our staff members were injured during this attack. Since October 1st, there have been hundreds of terrorist attacks throughout the nation of Israel. The attacks have claimed the lives of over 25 Jewish people and at least 400 more have been wounded. All attacks have been aimed at innocent Jewish citizens. It is written in Deuteronomy 33, Blessed are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, who is the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty. So your enemies will cringe before you and you will tread upon their high places. Thank you for praying for us and the families of those who have lost loved ones. Please continue to pray for those who have been affected by these tragedies and for the peace of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel during this trying and difficult time. Back to you, Jacob and Sheba. Thank you, Sagi. It's always really so good to hear what you have to say. And now, before we explore this issue, let's get some historical background. The name Palestine was originally given by the Romans to the ancient kingdom of Israel. This was done in an attempt to erase any connection between the Jewish people and their homeland, their land of promise. It is important to note that for the following 600 years, there was no Arab presence whatsoever in Palestine until the birth of Islam in the seventh century. Right, and after the birth of Islam in the seventh century, Arab tribes, tribes from Saudi Arabia started mi migrating north in order to conquer the world for the glory of Islam. Some of these mm. tribes invaded the land of Palestine and lived here. These people identified themselves with a greater Islamic nation and never really tried to connect their identity to in any way with the land of Palestine or the name Palestinians. In the 10th century, an Arab geographer from Jerusalem named al muqaddasi wrote that most of the population of Jerusalem are Jews and Christians. So we see this was still a Judeo-Christian land. The Arabs in Palestine became a majority only after their second major invasion in the 12th century, where there was much bloodshed and murdering of the indigenous Judeo-Christian population. But even after controlling the area, the Arabs in the land of Palestine still considered themselves a part of the great Islamic and Arab nation 
and never referred to themselves as Palestinians. Before the first waves of immigration of Jews back to Palestine, there is nothing in the history books or archaeological evidence on any attempt by the Arab residents of Palestine to claim they were native to the land. In fact, we know from historical records that before 1964, there was no official Palestinian Arab people. And we need to know that the main waves of Arab invasion to Palestine were simultaneous with the Jewish immigration back to the land. These Arab invaders saw the Jewish immigrants as competitors to their raiding business and as fresh meat to exploit due to the weakness of the Ottoman Empire, it was very easy for them to bring in more members of their tribes, namely from Egypt and Syria. Their goal was to block any chance of the Jews to settle the land peacefully. We can see from historical records that Jews established settlements on land that they legally purchased from the Ottoman Empire. They dried out the swamps, cleared the fields and grew crops. And within a few years, like a virus, Arab families settled on the outskirts of the new Jewish settlements in order to block and to exploit the Jewish efforts to revive the land. We know that Arabs living in Israel never claim that they were Palestinians. They were Arab and they saw their connection only to the greater Arab nationality and to their individual clans and families. As a matter of fact, all the world, I'm talking about all the world, until 1964, did not see Palestine as anything other than a Jewish land. If you look at the flag of Palestine from 1939 that was printed in World Atlas, you will see that it consists of a blue and white background and the Star of David in the middle. That this, this whole thing, that, does it remind you of a flag that exists today? The Arab-Palestinian flag was only created in 1964 for the terror organization known as the PLO. Now, isn't that amazing, Kelisheva, to really see how they manage through media, to penetrate through such a propaganda, a lie, into the mind and the heart of the entire world. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking to really see what they have managed to do in the hearts of Christians. You know, I mean, if you hear a lie enough times, it, it becomes truth. That's, that's a secret Arafat, I think, really discovered. He repeated, repeated the same lie again and again. And, in the end, you can't really check if it's true or not. Yeah, but I can understand the world falling into such a net of keep pondering this lie. But the Christians, it just seems like more and more Christians beginning to fall into that net in really believing that, wow, Israel have no right over this land of promise. And they're coming with all kinds of excuses. And that's really an amazing thing what the media and what propaganda and how lies can really penetrate into the heart. Palestine throughout the centuries was known mainly as the Holy Land. The Holy Land, the ancient homeland of the Jewish people, their land of promise. Even the Jews that returned to the land in the 18th century, while Israel was all in swamps, yeah, and real desert, and nothing but dust, and everything desolate. They're coming back on the 18th century, and what? They're using the name Palestine Israel. The Jewish using the name Palestine Israel when referring to their homeland, their land of promise. Later on, we really see this Palestine soccer team before the establishment of the State of Israel was comprised only of Jewish players because 
there were still no Arabs that claimed they were Palestinians or wanted any part of the restoration of the Jewish homeland. You can even see that the mandate given to the United Kingdom over the Palestine area by the League of Nations resolution in 1922 was that they would be responsible for placing the country under such political, administrative and economic conditions as will secure the establishment of the Jewish national home in Palestine. In other words, they were there to prepare the area for Jewish control, period. There was no mention of any Arab control over any part of Palestine. Now, did you know the mandate of Palestine, including both the East and the West Bank of the river Jordan, which today is Israel and the Kingdom of Jordan? But all this changed on June 2nd, 1964, when a terrorist organization named the PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization, was established in Cairo. Their only purpose was, and still is, to destroy Israel via the lie of the Palestinian Arab people. Oh, the world doesn't know how this whole thing began, Elisheva. How this whole agenda started with Yasser Arafat. Wise man, crafty man, very and people knew how to pick it up where he left it, and they just continue with his agenda big time. In 1948, Israel became a nation. And praise God, he promised, and that which he promised, he knows how to perform. He promised to bring us back. So in 1948, he brought us, he brought us back. And furthermore, in 1967, he gave us the city of Jerusalem as he promised he would. In fact, Yeshua promised that in, um, where was it, uh, Luke 21. At this point, as God gathering his people back in the land, it was decided to drop the name Palestine from all official documentation and keep the biblical name Israel for the newly founded Jewish homeland. Thank you, Lord. This made it very easy for the Arabs to claim the name Palestine for themselves. All leaders of the Palestinians kept on saying the same thing. The existence of separate Palestine identity exists only for tactical reason. The establishment of a Palestinian state is a new tool to continue their fight against Israel and uh, to keep up the Arab unity. I mean, Even this, they themselves say that, huh? Yeah, this is, this is, I mean, this Palestine, because they could really easily find solution for these things. They have so much land, they have so much money, but they're really in the business of keeping the refugees camps. They are in business of really keeping them suffering in order to really keep themselves united and keep the world up against us. I mean, with all the money that the Arabs have, with all the land that they have, I mean, it would be so easy to help these people and all the money that they receive from Europe, yeah? But it's their business to keep all this yeah. um, uh, refugees camp to raise up the world against us. And the world is rising up against us, and that's really heartbreaking. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking to see Christian rising up against us. Anyway, in 2012, Fatih Haman, a minister of Hamas, admitted on Egyptian television that there is no such thing as a separate Palestinian people and that half of the Palestinians are Egyptian and the other half are Saudis wow. from Saudi Arabia. So that's, uh, that's an amazing statement, such a true statement. And uh, I mean, it has been vibrated, and people keep now telling us that the Palestinians are a nation, are a people, and this is their land. Right. Yeah. The Palestinian National Charter creates for the first time the nationality of the Palestinian Arabs. This came to be because the Arab League realized that they needed to operate on two fronts. Firstly, 
to continue to use terror to destroy any Jewish presence in the land, and secondly, to exploit the Western international laws against themselves to change the worldview to be against the Jewish people. Now you may ask, why would the Muslims be so fixed to destroy the Jewish presence in the Middle East? Well, it is truly very simple. The very existence of the Jewish people is an offense to the Muslims' fate because as long as there are Jews alive, the Muslims' fate has no basis for existing. Therefore, they will do anything, whatever it takes, to get the Jews out of here. And it's not just about Judea and Samaria. It's not about just Gaza. It's about the whole land. I mean, if you just give them Judea and Samaria, you think they'd be satisfied? You think they'll really be quiet? It's amazing that Jewish people, and I really believe, and this is something for you to consider, it is the counsel of God, the mind of God, the wisdom of God in having the Jewish people in the very heart of the Arab world, all in setting up the platform for the coming day of the Lord. And when I hear this singing, all around the world, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And to realize that even so-called Christians really are crying this cry, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, that's an amazing thing that the world is beginning to have their say against the Jewish people, just as the Bible very clearly promised the world will rise up against Jerusalem, the city of our Lord, the capital of uh, the Jewish nation, Israel. Right. We, we clearly see today that the world is turning against Israel, yeah. God's chosen people. The Palestinian lie is just one of many weapons in use by the Muslim nations against God. Today in the UN, the number of Muslim countries is growing rapidly and threatens to become a majority even. The Muslims are using their growing power in the UN to single out Israel as the enemy of the world. The internet and media is full of their lies and propaganda and people are being misled to believe that Israel and Zionism are what's wrong with the world today and need to be eliminated. Now that's, that's really amazing. I mean, they're really beginning to believe that there is the Jewish solution. What was with Hitler? Endlösung, yeah. Endlösung, what final, was it? Final solution. The final solution. I mean, once again, as history have not really learned that the final solution will be to demolish the Jewish people and then peace will come upon the face of the earth. Beloved of God, truly it seems that the lessons of 70 years ago has already been forgotten and the anti-Jewish atmosphere in Europe from the first half of the 20th century is resurfacing and rising up again. Now there is an added bonus, a slow but constant Arabic Muslim occupation of Europe. They're really taking it over in many, many ways. And they realize that by war they cannot really do it. So they conquer, by a slow but constant demographic change. I mean, can you imagine, um, say, half a million of Arabs coming to Europe, every one of them bring nothing less than five to 10, 12, 15 children. What will take place in 20 years from now? We allowing them to use democratic law to achieve more control over the land they invade. I mean, using the democracy that we really have, they will run into the city officials and require to build a mosque here and a mosque there. And rather than expect, ex accepting the culture of Europe, they come and enforce their culture on all of Europe and we just allowing them. The Arabs have done the very same thing in Israel since the mid 19th century. 
And could it be that after they saw the success of the invention of the Palestinian people and the power it gave them, they are now expanding their Congress to the rest of the world? Of course! What do you expect? I mean, they really have seen it works. <laughs> that it really works. And they're going all the way. All the way they're going. And do you remember the question that we asked at the beginning of the show? I believe you can now see that the answer to all these questions is resounding no. There was never any Palestinian nation or kingdom, no Palestinian king or ruler, no Palestinian language or currency or a flag. All these Palestinian claims are a lie to feather the Muslim agenda but just to clarify, beloved, just to clarify, we are not against the people. Certainly not. We love the people. We share the gospel with them. We help them. And we pray that they too will come to understand the truth about God's chosen people and their nation. Now, we really want to pray for all of this. Elisheva, maybe you pray. Would you? Okay. okay. Please. And join us. Join us in prayer for what's taking place at this hour of Israeli history in this land as God gathered us back as He promised He would. Elisheva. Father in heaven, our loving Father and God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the Gentiles. Father, thank you so much that you do hear our prayer. Thank you that you care for you people, but you care for this whole area. You care for each and every person that lives here. And we praise you that you love each and every Muslim. And we just ask you that you will reveal yourself to them, that you will open their hearts towards your love, towards your peace. Father, we really want to see them saved. For them, it looks like an advantage to possess the land, to gain ma uh, power, but only if they follow your footsteps, only if they follow your plan, they will be really happy, they will be really joyful and will have peace. So we ask you that you will open their eyes, you will open their hearts and give them this forgiveness of sin, this new life in abundance that you gave us already. And we ask that all those millions of Muslims will come to faith one by one, one after the other. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name because you are able to do that. Amen. Amen. And Father, we pray that you will encourage the saints and uh, Europe where so many refugees hmm. are uh, flooding into that land, that you will encourage the believers, Father, the true remnant, the church, to reach out to them with the gospel of thy kingdom, the gospel of peace. Father, that these refugees, their Lord God, will truly be approached by the born-again believers with the gospel of thy kingdom with no shame but boldness and courage and that many Muslims will uh, uh, come to see the reality of your love mm -hmm. in Yeshua Mashiach, Lord God. And I just pray that here in this land, in Israel, as we go out, Trumpet of Salvation team daily, Father, in a countless conversation with the Jews and the Arabs, Father, with the giving out of tracts and literatures and books, particularly the book, Why Me?, that you will lift up the veil from their eyes. Father, we are really going out there with our two fishes, with our five loaves of bread, and we look on to you to lift up the veil from their eyes, that you will give the increase, that you will bring forth fruit to the glory of your name, to the salvation of your people, Jews and Arabs alike. Mm. Father, we want to thank you so much for the event we talked about coming up next Wednesday. Lord God, that you really have my brothers and sisters pray. And as we share the gospel there, Father, in this auditorium, Lord God, that you will pour your spirit, that something that has taken place at the day of Pentecost will take place, that thy Holy Spirit will come up with conviction upon the audience there, Lord God. And People will come to really see you for who you are and much fruit will come into thy glorious vineyard. Lord God, thank you. And I want to thank you for our brothers and sisters, Father, across the globe. Mm. Bless each and every one. You know every tear. You know every person. 
and we pray that you will meet each and every one, Father, where they need you. And your grace and your mercy and your faithfulness and your loving kindness in the lives of those who, whom you have given birth by the power of thy Holy Spirit, your children. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for revealing truth. God blessing upon you, beloved. And may the Lord go before you and bless you. And uh, may you will be the people who know how to seek his kingdom first. And he will meet you with every need in life if you just be focused about this glorious kingdom, the kingdom of our God. Elisheva. And be sure to tune in next week at the same time in the same place when we talk about Islam and their plans to take over the world and what we as believers can do about it. See you next time. Bye-bye. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. And with the holy kiss.